Welcome to AHHS Theater's original production of The Night at Red Ranch. The play you are about to experience was remotely written, performed, and produced during the COVID-19 pandemic by the students and production team of Alexander Hamilton High School in Elmstrand, New York. We would like to give a special thank you to this episode's sponsors, Elmstrand Mayor Williams, Trustees and Administrator, Bob, Deborah, and Lauren Williams, j Reporting of Westchester, and Burger King. We appreciate your continued support. Thank you as well to the Elmshire Union Free School District Board of Education and Administration. Please visit our website at eufsd.org theater. There you will be able to read the credits for this play, sign up for our newsletter, stay up to date on our upcoming productions, as well as donate to the program. We are incredibly grateful for your patronage and support. And now, without further ado, please sit back, relax, and enjoy Episode 1, of AHHS Theater's The Night at Raider Ranch. Gather around, everyone. I'm going to be taking attendance before you all file onto the bus. Quiet, please. My list has nine of you coming on this trip, so listen up for your name. Martin? Here. Martin Barnes, senior, a classic nerd, super smart and tech savvy. We'll resort to quoting Star Wars when nervous. Amelia? Yes? Just say here. Great. Amelia Taylor. Junior, the sarcastic one, part-time professional photographer, won't go anywhere without her Polaroid camera. Is Antoinette here? Present, Mr. Reed. Antoinette Dupont, Junior, the paranoid sweetheart, born in France, moved to the U.S. at a very young age, is terrified of pretty much everything. Gisela? Here. Gisela Simon, Senior, the chill one, passionate about music and her guitar, aspiring singer. Andre? Sup, Mr. R. Wait. Didn't you wear that same outfit on Tuesday? Oh, shut up, Andre. Andre Brando, senior, class clown and resident hothead. Short temper, big heart. Ezekiel? Here. Ezekiel Thomas, junior, the loner. May overthink scenarios, but overall is pretty level-headed. Sadie? Here. Sadie Daniels, junior, the selfless one. Always happy to comfort others. Known for her great advice. Joey? Here. Now can we please get inside of the bus already? I'm freezing. Joey De Silva, senior, the star athlete. Brave and courageous, always willing to take one for the team. And last but not least, Robin. Robin Russo. Has anyone seen Robin? Bigger she be late. <sighs> Good morning to you too, Robin. Robin Russo, senior, social outcast by choice. Won't hesitate to tell you what's on her mind. All right, everyone, on the bus. I refuse to be late. This is going to be so much fun. Do you think they have cows there? there? No, me too. And don't worry, because what we're going to get is nowhere near what they're expected to get up north. Keep your shovels nearby, because some parts of the state are looking to get a whopping three feet of snow. More on that in a bit. Good morning, Mr. Reed. Yeah, hi, Paul. Let's get this bus moving, yeah? And can you shut that radio off? It's gonna make me car sick. As you command. All right, everyone. We have about three hours before we arrive at Raider Ranch. Here are the ground rules. Stay on the ranch and don't wander off. Roommates will be assigned and cannot be switched, so I don't want to hear any complaining. Wait, I thought we got to pick our roommates before. 
Unfortunately, your room requests were misplaced, and I took it upon myself to pair you up randomly. So, the standard no boys in the girls' rooms and no girls in the boys' room, no alcohol or illegal substances of any kind, yada yada, and most importantly, do not leave your rooms after the 8 p.m. curfew. 8 p.m.? Come on, Mr. Reed, can't we have until, like, midnight? The curfew's a mandatory rule of the farm, so I'm sorry, but no. Any other questions? How many volunteer hours does this count for again? 35. Yes, Joey? And what time are we getting back on Sunday? I've got basketball practice and I can't be late if I want to start on Monday. Your sports commitments are not my concern, Miss De Silva. Anything else? Good. Here are your room assignments. Martin, Andre, and Ezekiel will be in one room. Hey. Sweet. Antoinette, you'll be staying with Gisela. Um, Joey and Sadie can room together. And sorry, Amelia, but it looks like you're stuck with Robin. This should be interesting. Good. Now, if you need me, I'll be up front listening to my podcast. Buckle up, kids. We got a long ride ahead of us. The bus ride to Raider Ranch is a long one. Some of the students are excited while others are just here for the service hours. Regardless, this will be a trip they will never forget. Okay. All right, everyone, let's get this weekend started. Hopefully these hours are worth it. Wait, Mr. Reed, my phone's not getting any signal. Please tell me if they've got Wi-Fi here. Nope, no Wi-Fi and no service. I promise you'll survive the weekend. TikTok will still be there when we get back, Martin. God, I don't get paid enough for this. Ooh, Amelia, is that a Polaroid camera? So retro. Oh, what's that smell? I'd say it's coming from the farm, Andre. But then again, you might just be smelling yourself. Ha <laughs> ha, very funny. All right, everyone, come on, let's go. Off the bus. Have a great trip, kids. Be safe. See you Sunday. One by one, the students file off the bus and follow Mr. Reed up the gravel road. They arrive at an old and large three-story farmhouse and are greeted by Miss Diane Ellis, the farm's owner. Miss Ellis is in her mid-fifties and has a warm, welcoming energy about her. Hey, Mr. Reed. Boy, it's been a while since I've seen you. Great to see you, Diane. How's Jack doing at Princeton? He's doing great, thanks. Hey all, welcome to my farm. I'm Miss Alice. I've given my farm hands the weekend off since I've got you all here to help me. I'll be assigning you to a bunch of different chores throughout your time here so you get the full farm experience. Wow, so exciting. <laughs> hey now, I'm not playing games. I will call your parents if necessary. How are you going to call our parents if we don't have any service? <laughs> now I may not have Wi-Fi. But I do have a computer and a landline you can use to let your parents know you've arrived safely or for an emergency. Now look, I know being on a farm may not be the trip of a lifetime, but I promise it can be an amazing experience if you make the most of it. There's a reason I keep having the kids from Eagle High back every year. So let's get inside and I can start giving you a tour of the farmhouse. Love that, I'm freezing. Ooh, ooh, that reminds me. I whipped up some hot chocolate and homemade apple cider donuts for your arrival. They're on the table in the dining room. Go on in and help yourselves. You don't have to tell me twice. Don't you There was probably a better way we could have done that. Yeah, I see that now. Having had their fill of donuts and hot chocolate, Miss Ellis showed the students to their rooms and began the tour of the farm. She did not hesitate to put them right to work. She assigned Ezekiel and Sadie to work in the chicken coop, Gisela, Amelia, and Antoinette to repaint the posts inside the barn, Martin and Joey to feed the goats, and Robin and Andre to prepare the night's dinner. Look at all those chickens! <laughs> well played! Come on, Ezekiel, help me with this bag. Miss Ellis said we've got to refill the food and water. You got it, boss. Why don't we just lift the bag and pour it into the feeding tubes? I'm not sure that's a good idea. We should really do it scoop by scoop like she said. Trust me, Sadie. It'll be faster. What could go wrong? <laughs> Here, help me lift it. 
And there goes the food. Well, at least the chickens are happy. <laughs> Come on, let's clean it up before Miss Ellis finds out. Now that sounds like a good idea. Wasn't she kind of weird? Uh, who? Miss Ellis. Like, she was just a little too nice. I mean, I guess. I wasn't really paying that much attention to her. I don't know. Something about her was just weird. Watch her closely next time. You'll see what I mean. I feel like I would paint a lot faster if I wasn't being distracted by all this humming. No, Amelia's wrong. Gisela, keep humming. I love it. Ah, oh, thanks, Antoinette. It's actually this new song I'm writing. What's it called? Running to the Mountain. Well, you can count on me running away when I hear it. You know, you can be very rude sometimes, Amelia. Wait, Antoinette, it's okay. You really don't have to- Come relax, everyone. I'm only joking. Oh, great. You guys made me spill paint in my pants. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> Nothing. Just the brown paint makes it look like you had a little accident. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this. I hate all of this. Oh no, Martin. These goats stink. I know, it's nasty. I didn't know they could eat so much. Whoa, I just got a message. What? How'd you get signal? Let me check my phone. I don't know, but I lost it now. Of course the one text I got was spam. Oh hell no, get this goat away from me! <laughs> Joey, it just wants you to pet it. The force is strong with this one. The what is the what? Nah, there's no way I'm touching that. Go to Martin. Chew. Go to Martin. <laughs> I've got to say, you surprised me. I would have thought you were more of an outdoorsy person. Yeah, no. I hate the outdoors. And animals. Especially if they stink like this. Well, that's surprising. What do you mean? I'm just saying. On the court, you seem totally calm and collected. Like you're fearless. I just thought you wouldn't be scared of anything. Well, I'm actually scared of a lot of things. What about you? I mean, you surprised me too. I thought you'd be begging to do homework or reading some book or whatever. Nope, I actually love this. <laughs> I guess you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Pun intended. Stupid goats, why are they doing that? Looks like they want more food. Well, hurry up and give them more. I want to get out of here before we start to smell like them. Oh. And you're still a nerd to me, by the way. Don't think this conversation changed anything. <laughs> I didn't think it did. Yo, pass me that box of pasta. Heads up! <laughs> nice catch. You're an idiot. What are you even cutting? Uh, the cucumbers? Aren't we supposed to be making a salad to go with the pasta? Yeah, but you're supposed to wash them first. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I didn't know we were going to be fine dining, Miss Gordon Ramsay. Are you even following the recipe Miss Ellis left us? Shut up. Put the pasta in the water and wait 10 minutes. You don't need a recipe to know that. I'll finish the salad. Fine. Ah, my hand! Geez, Andre. Are you that incapable in the kitchen? Sorry, I've never done this. I'm used to eating out a lot. Wait, have you really never made pasta before? Here, give me your hand. We'll run it under some cool water and it'll feel better. Ah, oh, that hurts. Better? Yeah. Well, keep your hand under. I have to clean up the mess you made by the stove, Aquaman. After an exhausting day of work, the group of students gather at the dinner table. 
The winter night has set in, and everyone is enjoying their comforting meal. That really was absolutely delicious! Yeah, nice work, you two. It was all Robin. She's a natural. I have to say, Miss Russo, I'm surprised. I had no idea you could do anything besides skateboard. Listen, I've been cooking since I first learned to walk. Spaghetti and meatballs is nothing special. How rude of me. Um, sorry, I had to take that call. Everything okay? Yes, uh, all's well. Anywho, this dinner was incredible. Thank you, Robin and Andre. As a matter of fact, you should all be proud of the excellent work you've done today. Yeah, yeah, wonderful work. Applause all around. But look at the time. Your curfew's in 30 minutes and I've got a podcast to finish, so hurry and get this all cleaned up. Wait, Mr. Reed, before we all go upstairs, could you take a photo of us? I just think this is a really sweet moment. Oh, I love that idea. Yeah, fine, uh, that's fine, but hurry up. Amelia, do you mind if we use your camera? <sighs> yeah, sure, I'll go get it. The snow's really starting to come down out there. It sure is. Um, it looks like I'm gonna have to drive into town after you all head to bed. What are you heading into town for? Oh, nothing. Just have to, um, drop off something with a friend. It can't wait until tomorrow, especially if there's a chance of getting snowed in. Snowed in? Here's the camera. Ah, perfect. Mr. Reed, can you do us the favor? Of course. Do you even know how to use a Polaroid camera, Mr. Reed? Very funny. Obviously I do. These were all the rage back in my day. Now get close and pretend you like each other. Say cheese! Cheese! Lovely. All right, everyone. Time for bed. Set your alarms for 4.30 a.m. We've got a lot of work to do tomorrow. 4.30? After a lovely meal, the students of Eagle High clean up the dining room and head upstairs to bed. Mr. Reed ensures everyone is in their respective rooms and reminds them of the rules. He then shuffles to his room and begins to listen to his podcast. Downstairs, Miss Ellis hurriedly grabs her wallet and rushes to her pickup truck. The closest town is about a half hour drive and so she wants to make sure she gets back before the storm worsens. Initially, the students upstairs have a hard time falling asleep. Sounds of creaking floorboards and rattling pipes keep them awake. However, exhaustion from the day eventually overtakes them, and one by one, they fall into a deep sleep. Martin! 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 Mm, What do you want, Andre? Did you hear that? Obviously not. There was a huge crash upstairs. What? I'm gonna go check. It's locked. Why is it locked? Hello? Mr. Reed? Our door's locked! Mr. Reed! He's on the third floor. He can't hear you. Mr. Reed! What the hell's going on? Hello? I don't know, but I'm freezing. Wait, there's no heat coming out of the vent. Why is it off? Ugh, I swear if Andre doesn't cut that out, I'm going to kill him. Mr. Reed! You won't have to, because I'm going to kill him first. Andre, what kind of sick game are you playing? Robin, our door's locked. Can you let us out? Ours is locked, too. Is this a joke, Andre? No, I didn't do this! Oh, great. So this is how I end up dying. Shut up and help me find something to get this door open. Perfect. Who taught you how to pick a lock? Come on. Andre, it's me. Keep quiet and give me a second to pick your lock. Amelia, go check on the others down the hall. Thank God. 
What's going on? Why is it so cold? Keep your voice down, Ezekiel. As a matter of fact, everyone keep quiet and walk softly. Something's not right. Sadie and Joy's room is locked, but they're both still asleep. Giselle and Antoinette's room is locked too. Antoinette's freaking out. Okay, give me a sec and I'll go unlock their rooms. Andre, you and Martin go check on Mr. Reed. Robin, Amelia, and Ezekiel race to the other rooms and quickly unlock them. They awake Joey and Sadie and explain what little they know. Once they unlock Antoinette and Gisela's room, they all quietly make their way back down the hall to await Andre and Martin's return. Breathe, Antoinette, breathe. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Hey, it's gonna be okay. You don't have to apologize for anything. This is just some big joke Mr. Reed's playing on us. It's been 15 minutes already. Where are they? Guys, Mr. Reed's not in his room. What? Please Wait, what? His room was unlocked, and it looks like there was a fight, because there's some blood, and a whole bunch of things are on the floor. We checked Miss Elsa's room, and she's not in there. The bed hasn't been slept in. Her pickup truck isn't even outside. Oh my god. What are we going to do? I'm not trying to be dramatic, but it looks like we're on our own here. <gasps> or maybe we're not. Thank you for listening to episode one of AHHS Theater's The Night at Raider Ranch. Please visit our website at eufsd.org theater to read the credits for this play, sign up for our newsletter, and consider donating to support our program. We thank you again for listening and remind you to look out for episode two. We'll see you then.